perfect, perfect. Okay, I am going to be sharing a number of photos. If it just lets me behave, holy. Come on. Touch screen, everything, right? Except you need giant fat fingers for it. True. Mm -hmm. I'll start with that. Now, actually, everyone sees on there, uh, it looks like chicken scratch, right? So, and uh, of course, uh, well, kind of is chicken scratch from about 5,000 years ago. That's uh, Sumerian, uh, it's Sumerian. It's cuneiform. Why do I post this as the first picture? Well, if you look really close, um, you'll see it's just a, a series of wedges and lines, thick and thin. And that would be the basis that, uh, that really, it dignifies and really signifies, it really brings depth to uh, anything that we write. It's more than playing tic-tac-toe or, you know, checking people off at the gate, tick, 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 stroke. So, um, that's, that should, that should be what you see on the screen. The next, uh, image of course is, uh, some Roman inscription. Now, of course, uh, the first alphabet that I'll be, uh, uh whipping over really is, um, 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 a Roman style alphabet because for one thing, it's, uh, it's the one thing that we're uh, most familiar with. Um, so, and, uh, the other thing it's the easiest to, uh, to decorate. So when you, uh, um, start to do your scrolls, um, if you just do your, what you think of as a regular capital letter and add some flourishes, suddenly you're doing calligraphy. So say for example, um, I start with a V. Can everyone see that? Hopefully you can. All of a sudden, if you just put on little wedges on it, color it in. Suddenly we have a stronger V. So I'll be doing this for each and every single letter, <laughs> if, uh, as long as you have the patience for it. Um, and then I'll switch over to versals. So, and that is, uh, that is essentially uh, um, what I'll be uh, doing here today, is uh, just showing you how, uh, um, where some of the uh, um, feet, the serifs, would actually attach. There's the B for the A. And you can pick a side to make it thicker, and then you have your thick and thin. Just bearing in mind that uh, uh, the image, um, all of this is derived from a lot of the Roman inscription. It was written down in papyrus too, but it, the Romans did write like chickens as well. Uh, they were uh, just as guilty as uh, cursive and uh, ridiculous writing as we are. So we're, you don't have to feel alone like that. So uh, the trick with the B is it has a thicker stem, a smaller bowl, and a bigger bowl. Just like so. So hopefully these will, uh, um, this will serve as a, just a bit of a demo, especially when, you're, uh, when this is all being recorded. So then you can go back and have a look and see what I was doing. Now, if you're doing this in ink, you can do this straight in ink if you wanted to. I'm gonna put this in like this. It is very possible to draw the, uh, the your entire letter in with a finer point pen. This S here, for an example, was drawn that way. If you see, there's all these polka dots on there. Oh, this is great. And then you realize when you uh, look on, screen, on a screen, um, I will have links uh, um, set up. Actually, there's a link now on the Open Classroom uh, and a handout site. And the very bottom one has a link to this particular S. Um, and you'll look, if you look really closely, you notice that there are all these fine lines making up what looks like a solid S, except for the dots. It's because they used a finer pen, they probably had dots for your, uh, for your S, and they simply drew around it. <laughs> it's kind of crazy, right? But you know, there's nothing wrong with it. It doesn't have to be with a brush. It could just be with your pen all together. 
So there's your D. Now E's are much like L's. L's start with that kind of triangle, that kind of wedge, but they also do have an, a wedge out there. Sometimes your edge, your wedge, starts right at the base. It's easy as that, right? Of course, you saw what the F was. The G's are relatively unchanged throughout the ages. Now I can just start with this. H's, likewise, are relatively unchanged. There are some variants um, um, through the periods. There we go. Here's your, uh, your basic uh, Roman. The I, of course, is easy. You think. But if you think in terms of a triangle and then fill that in, you'll get your serifs just right. Just a matter of coloring it in. Or you can just draw out your triangle in your column and another one and then make uh, make decorations in it of various sorts. J's, there were no J's. Um, I find that uh, if you come across uh, uh, a lot of our a lot of our scrolls of course are in English or uh, some kind of modern alphabet. It, we can try to you know do do some kind of funky little J looking thing and it would look okay. But when you're trying to give the flavor of uh, something period, it's a lot more difficult. You, um, you may as well just stick with the I and have a transcription beside for the heralds to say, hey, you know what, this is what it says. And here's a period look. Ooh, put it on the wall, it looks nice. That's, that's the idea. Um, Ks, there were no Ks either, just hard Cs. So, you can take that with a grain of salt. You can put a stick on your C if you really wanted to. Uh, the Versals uh, does have a K for it, so I can uh, demonstrate that in a little bit. So uh, we looked over the L. The M's also, here's an M. Okay, so your everyone, of course, is perfectly welcome to follow along. I don't know how many uh, are or not, but uh, I would hope you would. There's your N. Now, if you're doing this in ink, one stroke, two stroke, wedge, wedge in ink. Any size, as long as it's, uh, and you'll, you'll know what uh, looks better when you, when, once you try it. O's will be easy, of course. I'm getting away on you. The Q's are also relatively unchanged throughout the period. The, uh, the Romans did have quite a few Q words. When it came to their empire, they didn't take the Q. Ha, ha, ha. Okay. And R, you just simply 
add to it, except sometimes what the Romans like to do is they extended their R's a little bit. And that gives it uh, your certain amount of flair. Um, S's are notoriously difficult. Um, in the Roman alphabet, they would be almost um, straight across. The segment would be straight across, sorry, in the middle. You can just put your triangles on it. Uh, Here's a Roman S. T. Similar to similar to an upside down L. Yeah, I think you have two triangles in there like that. And a triangle at the bottom. You thicken that up, color those in. You have your perfect T. Uh, we're nearing the end of the Roman alphabet then. Uh, we have the U. Oh, let's see if I can refer to a U on a printout here. I have a printout here somewhere. Ah, uh, quite a few U's were actually these. So the U would be a, a little bit more, um, that's a little bit later but often it would be just be a simple V, especially for capitals. Now, what do you do in the case of uh, the letter Z? Hmm. Well, not, a, not a many capitals, fortunately, start with the letter Z. But say you have um, some wordsmith that decides to uh, um, start your scroll with uh, zany. Great. Zany are the exploits of X, Y, and Z. So what do you do? <laughs> Just start with a T, T, S, S, sound. It's a phonetic scroll then. Um, you can try to do a, a, some kind of Z, but then you're making it a later period scroll. This wouldn't be the same, right? It works, I guess, but... Um, If um, your scroll begins with the W and you're trying to do a capital for a W, you're like, oh, well, what do we do? Stick with the V. Really, a W is really going to be two Vs put together. If, they, if you really insisted on it. And it works, but it depends on the period that you're working on. Um, I think I got all the letters there. Let's see, S, T, U, B, W, oh, X. X is easy. Triangles are a little bit different. There we go. All right, so there is a Roman alphabet in a nutshell. You notice that I'm doing a lot of this in pencil and it's, it's, it's rough work. You could use a, a chalkboard as well just to sketch out what your letters could look like uh, before you really start on the rest of your project. And in that way as well, uh, you don't have to commit yourself um, to something drastic, but you can also have some fun with it and start drawing uh, little, little characters on here like, um, I don't know, like a little guy going woo <laughs> on your E or something. Okay, the next thing that we can look at then. Oh, does anyone have any uh, questions about the uh, Roman uh, Roman initials that I just whipped over uh, before I continue on? Anyone? Anyone? Okay. As um. The next point of reference, um, I first learned capitals. Actually, I'm book learned. 
I didn't actually have uh, someone sit me down and say, this is what you need to do. Um, I was pouring over Mark Drogan's books. And then I simply practiced and practiced and practiced. Practicing to the point actually, where I was uh, creating uh, many, many riffs, uh, which is uh, quite the pleasure to do actually. Okay, I'm gonna show you, um, I'm gonna do the ABCs of versals. Versals are decidedly later periods, so they come, uh, their emphasis, their wedges are a little bit blended. They're more like dots now. So for an A then, you start with your base stroke, but it's actually on your right instead of the left. I'm going straight up and down, a little longer. And do a swoop on across. And this is all, the next stroke is one stroke. Down, thin, back up again. A. I'll just do that again. Put a tag on it. A swoop across the top. Welcome to finish that, but you can just leave it, like, leave it like that. If you're doing it in red, and you can buy red inks and stuff, but that sometimes they just don't match the colors that are in scrolls. They're a deeper red or too light, uh, one or the other. So uh, you take paint and you mix it and you dip your pen in that. And you can uh, come up with all kinds of uh, fun letters that way. I'll do the letter B next. There's your small bowl and your big bowl. This is almost one swoop, isn't it? Uh, we're kind of breaking rules of calligraphy by going backwards or any which way without ever hardly, or without really lifting the pen much. You can use multiple strokes to thicken it, but if it looks thick enough, then you can leave it alone. The letter C, of course, in the versals, they took those triangles at the end. You know, we had those flicks there. And they just joined them. Done. Sometimes you can make your multiple strokes on the outside, sometimes on the inside. A D has a shorter stem. Make a dot. Swoop it around, and away you go. And there's my second stroke. The letter E. Go so, just like the C, really. Just like so, and this time, what you're doing is you're actually going up with the pen, down with the pen. You do the same thing at the base, but you don't have to, especially when your ink is wet, and uh, depends on the kind of paper you're using. Vellum, it's a little more forgiving. You can scratch off what you don't need. Here is an F. Oh, uh, the S I'm a little bit rough on.
That's pretty neat, right? It's because they took the, if their uh, triangles are too close or your wedges are too close, you may as well just join it. Because really, um, each successive uh, script that was created was created to uh, make your writing more cursive, faster. Faster you go, the better. The G, of course. Is relatively unchanged. Okay, here is an H. Oops. Okay, now the I also relatively unchanged. With the pen, I start with my tag and then draw it down. The bottom, make your baseline before you start drawing your ink down to your baseline. Otherwise, you wind up with weird tags underneath, right? Or you're trying to go up against the paper too much. The I, uh, a J, uh, this is a later period, right? There, you can tag on it. Okay, now the letter K. Again, this is later period. Start with the two strokes. Start with the top swoop. And from here, go towards the middle. You don't need much. There. And join it, there's your K. A letter L. Oh, let's see. Oh, I'm going to have to refer to my notes. Yep, that's right. These are, uh, some of these are relatively imperfect, but uh, we can, uh, they'll be good as an exemplar, right? Now the letter M recalls some unseal work. Now what do you do with these loose things? You gotta tag them together. So you do a swoop underneath. Now the letter N begins in a very peculiar fashion. Get this tag on here. It's almost like a small version of the H. It's like we took the tag off and we just, let it go. O's are everyone's favorites because, you know, they're O's. You can make them as big as you want. And even if they're not perfect, you see I'm just coloring it in with the, with the ink here. Even if they're not perfect, you put the rest of the script in, All of a sudden, it looks okay. 
um, a lot of the scribe works, a lot of scribes, you know, when they, when we say that we're writing it to make it faster, that also means that the scribes uh, at the time were really messy. They switched alphabets to make them neat again and also speed things up and maybe even save some paper. Okay, um, the letter P begins similarly to the N. The N actually would stay your usual lines, It'd be around there. For a P, you're actually going under, you have a descender. This is a little rough. I'm going to do that, that P again. Here's the P. There are going to be, um, there are as many different uh, ways of writing a P as there are scribes. So when you have your own personal take on it, there's nothing wrong with it at all. You don't worry about it being um, so precise because well, then we wouldn't be artists then, right? There. Q. As long as everyone can see here. Again, you start with something that looks like an O. You notice how I just do almost the two C's together and then fill in the middle. Like so, and you have your tag. Anyway, now the R begins similarly to the P in the end. So here you're rising above. Don't forget your bottom swoop. Now um, the letter S, like in many different alphabets, can be problematic. I, I like to start, I figured out for myself, I'll start in the middle. In fact, probably most how-to books would have you start in the middle. You just have a sideways swoop. Next, you start your top. And you just make a mound and wing it. The bottom part, Instead of finishing with the wing, some books would have you try to finish the swoop and go down. I just start down here. And it's a bit easier to join up there. A little easier. I'll do that again. So you can kind of see. As opposed to um, do a point of comparison then. There's a loop. Here you're going up against the curve, so you're actually making extra strokes in there. Stroke there, stroke there, stroke there. No, 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 no. This is a... Scribes like to go fast in period, right? We'll take our time and make it look, uh, give it some real polish, right? But if you give it like that, you'll have uh, S's that, are, that you'll be much happier with in the long run, so. Now the letter T perks back to older T's. Now the trick with this with T's is that you do need to go straight down. When you're painting as well, and you're giving that extra stroke, you actually start up here.
can start up there. I don't know if you uh, recognize any of those uh, kinds of circles where you always have that weird hump on top of the T's. Like, why is that hump there? That hump there is there because, oh, where did I put my pencil? Here's my pencil. That hump is there because they literally want to have as, as little pen work as they can. I don't know if you got to see that. Now, um, I, have, uh, I have seen exemplars actually where you actually only see the outlines of some of these letters. So that's how you kind of have an idea like, oh, that's why they construct it that way. So <laughs> it's just uh, inefficiency of motion, inefficiency of, uh, of motion. So. Now the letter U at this point, we know, because in uh, medieval Latin changed so many things. You give your U a nice good stem and a swoop across. I'm going to start on a fresh page here. I'm show you the W. Uh, w, much like the U, starts out like that. Now, if you recall what I did with the V earlier, this V, we'll just simply Make another U. Don't make another stem yet. Like this. You see how the other um, swooped down, just joined with the with that one. Then make your stem. And swoop across. Okay, so I'll do that again. Swoop, another swoop that starts, that um, ends down here at this point. Make your stem, why as you like. There you go. All right, U, X, the X. Now the X, of course, is also fun. As you make a nice thick, uh, nice and thick there, but you can also bring a curve here. Before you add your swoops. So dot, swoop. And it'll turn out uh, just right every time. I'll just do a single stroke here. One. It'll turn out different every time, I guess. Now the letter Y is a peculiar letter. It's an it's an actually an old English letter. Um, and it was misappropriated by the French later on. It's almost like a backwards thing, isn't it? Just a tag on, like so. I have seen these kinds of letters with the ball of ink and just as a swoop. 
So if we have some stylistic uh, choices in there, depends on which region you're going from or if you're looking at a specific script. So the Z, of course, came much later. Uh, the Z, uh, I've mentioned it in other courses, but I'll mention it again. The Z really is just a TS put together. Because there's your, in a regular script, there's your T, there's your S. It's a ligature. All this time, I think. <laughs> so, but anyway. Um, there are, are, those are our basic, uh, versals that I wanted to cover today. Um, so, and that really, I hope that it's more, I hope, I wish this to be a basis that you can just, uh, try some capitals without fear of looking at having it look wonky or anything like that. It's just something that it's something you can do even from the novice on. So, um, like really I was a novice not that long ago. I would say, I don't know, some people might argue that, but I, I have been doing it for some time. But, but in terms of uh, my own personal improvement, uh, I am much more confident with uh, capitals now that I've tried them. So I'm gonna see something up on the chat window here. I have run into this backwards Y in Money England looking at, yeah. Okay. Um, the oddness of Y. I, that's a very good question, actually, the oddness of why. In, in a lot of ways, it might be a matter of, um, I would actually say the way we write an I is more odd. Um, I'll give you a different kind of example. Then I can just uh, adjust my nib here. Here's a regular S. And here's a long S. Long S likes to have a stem there, right? So much like we'll have our stem. So it's just something that we like, we go from left to right. So we'll start stems on the left side as much as we can. And as you see, the Y would also Start with the stem on the left. More practical thing, I, I do believe, and it's just from, uh, from writing. So if I, if I were to write on speed, it's a lot easier to join a little wee stroke than a long one. So uh, hopefully that might give some ideas and maybe something I might, it might be something to delve into or talk to a linguist uh, kind of thing, right? So, okay, anyone? Uh, Anyone ha have any input on that as well, or uh, you gonna answer in chat or out loud? I think everybody is remarkably silent. Yeah. <laughs> They're still here. They're still here? Okay, all right, yeah. No, no, really, we're here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. And it, it, well, it's hard to tell over screen. Um, I just tried to uh, tell a story <laughs> and hopefully uh, the view is good that you can see the script and you can look at the recording and, uh, and view it or uh, look at the, some of the resources that I might list. So uh, Mark Drogan ha has a very good uh, selection of, uh, of capitals, but I also uh, refer to uh, David Harris. So I'll just put those two books out here. Um, my other sources, all the rest of my sources are online, online experiences. Um, there you go. If you can see those folks or not, yeah. Yeah, we can. Good. Wonderfully clear. Oh, good. All righty. Good. Okay. And um, yeah, I do a lot of. Um, I do a lot of uh, different kinds of research um, online as well. So let's see if I can um, bring up a different. I'm gonna close this one. How do I stop the share? I'm gonna share some content. 
I'm going to show you some, uh, we have a little bit of time so I can delve into my archives as well as take uh, further questions. Okay. Um, let's see if I can find a different kind of capital here. Uh, I have a lot of pictures too. I'm in the Lions Club as well. So I uh, take pictures of our, of our events and things. Ah, okay. I don't know if you saw this one or not. Hold on. I'm going to take uh, one, two, and I'm going to share a few of these. Three and and oh, here's some other ones. Five. I have to go back. The actually the my um Zoom doesn't always cooperate, and Google doesn't cooperate with Apple, and Apple doesn't cooperate. Uh, you know, okay. All right, here's some examples. Uh, this is some, uh, the first one is uh, uh, obviously a Roman, but you also have a look at uh, and see how the letters are broken up into segments um, that I was speaking to earlier. And those are basically uh, Roman capitals. They drew the outlines, filled them in later, if that. So, um, the next one is my, my own interpretation of that, um, where I, Took a script and way to go. That's a relatively recent one. And uh, there is another uh, uh, another scroll I did a little bit ago. That's uh, last summer. Working on the A. So, and again, I would just do I would do the outline first, and then fill it in. So again, you you don't have to do it with just pen. You can do it with uh, just a series of strokes, brush strokes, if you wanted to. Um, the one after that is an earlier period one, has a very peculiar uh, look to it, doesn't it? At end. But as you see, you see the wedge, uh, um, the wedge formations. No animals. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Uh, another, yeah, another one uh, that I uh, will point out is uh, this letter F with the lady in it. The unfinished lady and the pen strokes all around it. Very curious because uh, she's penciled in. <laughs> so they, you know, it looks like uh, the letter was drawn first and then everything else penciled in. But the way I've sometimes co constructed letters is I would try to do just the rough edging of, uh, sorry, the rough outline of a drawing, sorry, of the letter. So I would know that here's my F. And then I would plan my drawing around that before I even apply ink. So, or the rest of the ink or the rest of the paint. So it's possible then to do um, uh, paint stroke, paint, paint stroke, put the paint aside, figure out whatever you're doing in here, and then finishing your letter. Because for all we know, um, there were mistakes made with the, with the inking with the red or not. We don't know, right? So. It's a curious letter though, isn't it? So, um, there is a Roman T. You see the wedge shapes, wedge shapes. That's, uh, that T by the way is later period. Uh, 1571, I believe. Yep. And, um, also, uh, you can see that different pen stroke. Here's a, um, uh, the next one, the next couple, there's a letter N and a letter H. And I really, really interpreted it there, right? But as you see that there are single strokes giving the outline of the letter before you apply any kind of anything on it. But again, yet if you know the basic forms of the letter of the period, then it's a lot easier to break down into uh, and be creative with. So, okay. Oh, it's 10 2. <laughs> Any other questions then? Yep, I was just about to call it for you. Yeah, okay. Uh, there is a, a, a meeting 
in the social area immediately following this class uh, with their excellencies Ramshaven. So if you're going, take a minute and then you can head on in. Otherwise, thank you all for attending. And thank you all. Thank you, Erhard. That was lovely. Yes. No problem. Thank, thank you. you very thank you much. Very much. Said no. okay, thank you. I hope it helps. Sorry, I have an unrelated question. Where is the social area I keep hearing about? Because I don't, I didn't, I missed the meeting. Oh, um, uh, go, to Angry, go to angryhat.com. Uh, you'll see the full, uh, full things. Mm -hmm. uh, go to the website and you'll, I think it's on there. Is that right, Kellen? I didn't notice it there before, but maybe, but if that's where their excellence is going to be, maybe it's the location where their speech is supposed to be this evening. The, the link yeah. should be posted under open classes on the full yeah. website. Okay. I didn't see anything specially labeled social area, though. That, that's what's Ooh, maybe. I okay. found it. Okay. Oh, great. Let me see if I can get it into the chat there. Okay. I'll, um, I'll be posting uh, a series of pictures and capitals that we can all take as inspiration, but I'll, I'll post it after. Uh, okay. Especially when I have it compiled appropriately, because some of the file sizes I was making were too big. <laughs> so, Never too big. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it is. But thank you. Okay. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks so much, Okay, no problem.